and welcome to another edition of the program the eagle my name is aisha gambari i am aisha Mohammed. aisha welcome back from the london anti-corruption summit how did it go well it went very well aisha it was something it was an opportunity for nigeria to showcase to the world the administration stands against corruption because you know it had over 60 heads of government wow. you know in attendance and so it was just the right atmosphere for us to say Let's come together for a just cause, which is to tackle corruption together. Well, that was a very good move. On the Eagle today, we shall be bringing you highlights from the summit and other engagement of the acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, in London. Please stay tuned. The program continues shortly. <laughs> FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. We will also show you a documentary titled Nigeria's Anti-Corruption Renewal. It is on the challenges of corruption in Nigeria, efforts made by government in tackling corruption and the disastrous effects of the scourge on Nigeria as a country. The documentary will also showcase efforts made by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, so far in restoring sanity in Nigeria. Please stay with us as the program continues after this timeout. Don't go away. Imagine a society where everything works. Durable road networks, stable electricity supply, portable water, well-equipped and functional healthcare facilities, quality education for all, affordable housing schemes, social security benefits, job creation, and a lot more that makes life comfortable to live. That is an ideal society. We can only achieve these if we all play our part. Say no to corruption to enjoy these benefits. Kill corruption to save Nigeria. This message is from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Glad to have you join us again. Please stay tuned for our special documentary titled Nigeria's Anti-Corruption Renewal. Enjoy. And that is the daily grind of life in Nigeria, a nation blessed with abundant natural and human resources. Yet, its people live in their needs. On May 29, 2016, President Muhammad de Buhari, in his inaugural speech, aptly captured the corruption problem facing Nigeria. Then the president made a solemn vow concerning the problems to fellow countrymen. Having recognized the many challenges posed by corruption and the negative effects on Nigeria, President Buhari anchored his government wide ranging reforms on the fight against corruption. One of the four steps taken was to immediately cut down on wastages in government. 
Investigations into the public service system reveal that Nigeria lost billions of naira to the greedy hands of looters without conscience. One of their favorite sharp practices was perpetrated through the ghost worker syndrome. These calculated corrupt practices injected hundreds of thousands of non-existent workers into the government payroll system. Working in concert with the Federal Ministry of Finance, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission ESCC launched a swift suppression that led to the government saving billions of naira as nearly 40,000 ghost workers have so far been removed from the system. The syndicate behind the monumental scam has been broken. The EFCC, a key driver of Nigeria's corruption initiative, has started a massive onslaught against corrupt politically exposed persons. One of the flanks of war being waged by the Ibrahim Magu-led EFCC is leading to the recovery of billions of dollars originally provided to combat the Boko Haram insurgency in northeast Nigeria but which found its ways into the huge private estates of top military and political leaders. While the free stealing and sharing lasted, hundreds of soldiers were dying on the battlefield. Women were raped, children kidnapped and rendered orphans, tens of thousands of innocent lives lost, houses and properties destroyed. The two million displaced people in camps across the country, while being thankful for their lives, contend with the harsh realities of survival. In many other parts of the country, compatriots continue to live in fear, grief, pain, and sorrow. As the sufferings continued, a few individuals far away in the big cities whined and dined on what has been called blood money. Over $15 billion meant to acquire equipment for the armed forces were shared amongst top military officers and politicians. Investigations has revealed, for instance, that in a single stream of transaction, the sum of $2.1 billion moved through the office of a one-time national security advisor to those of several individuals for fictitious services that were never rendered. They acquired properties worth billions of naira, mansions, shopping plazas, luxury cars, jewelry, and even stuck millions of dollars in their bedrooms. One of the major goals of the EFCC is to ensure that corrupt elements are denied access to the proceeds of their crimes. From city to city, operators of the EFCC, in calculated and well-planned raid, combed every nook and cranny of the country to confiscate all the assets traced to the missing funds. In Maitama, Abuja, Nigeria, one of the retired generals involved in the bazaar acquired this massive and tastefully furnished edifice sitting on 2,400 square meters of land. The property is estimated to be worth over 2 billion naira. A search conducted within the property revealed a bag containing a million dollars stacked away inside a wardrobe in one of the rooms. How much do you have here? One, two, three, four, five. Now it is estimated to be $50,000. Yes, ten thousand per bunch. The same military officer invested billions of funds on other choice properties in Abuja and Lagos. This shopping plaza is also said to have been constructed from the stolen funds. The plaza, whose construction cost about 2 billion naira, 
is located in Wuse 2, Abuja, and has the capacity to accommodate dozens of offices, restaurants, and bars. All the properties are allegedly traced and acquired by some of the accused persons include a mansion under construction on Ethiop Close, Mitama Abuja, worth 600 million naira. Another on Panama Close, also in Mitama Abuja, is worth 450 million naira. An estate on Isia Karibu Avenue, Wuse to Abuja, is valued at roughly 2 billion naira. A terrace complex on Azab Crescent, who say to also in Abuja, has an estimated value tag of 600 million naira. On Kumasi Street, who say to Abuja, is another duplex valued at 320 million naira. On Agada Street, also in who say to Abuja, is an edifice worth 495 million naira. On Lake Chad Street, Metama Abuja, is another property bought for 670 million naira. And in White Villa Estate, Hasamusa Kasina Street, Asokoro, also in Abuja, the operatives discovered two terrace buildings allegedly acquired through illicit wealth for 170 million naira each. And in high brow areas in Lagos, Nigeria, the EFCC also traced and confiscated a number of choice properties worth over 5 billion naira linked to the massive fraud. Apart from the arms deal saga, the commission waged into the oil industry. The country's oil subsidy regime, which was characterized by massive corruption, was investigated and many corrupt oil marketers were arrested and arraigned before various cuts across the country. The subsidy fraud, which was perpetrated in connivance with government officials, drained the country's treasury as billions of naira was allegedly claimed by the criminals for products that were never supplied. One of the arrested criminals, Sheung Ogumbambo, realizing the weight of evidence against him, jumped bail, having been granted bail by the court. He fled the country and he has since been declared wanted by the EFCC. All the criminals indicted under alleged fraud are currently being prosecuted in various courts in Nigeria. Not resting on that, the Commission launched an investigation into the activities of the Ministry of Petroleum. An erstwhile minister in that ministry and her cronies were alleged to have stolen and laundered money in properties and jewelries worth over $1 billion. After thorough investigations, a search was conducted by the EFCC operatives on the properties allegedly acquired with the stolen funds. During the search, the operatives discovered boxes of jewellery worth over $100 million. Another property linked to the former minister and cronies is a luxury six-bedroom duplex on plot 1853 T.Y. Danjuma Close at Sokoro in Abuja. The property was said to have been bought at the sum of $18 million and renovated with $2 million. Investigations for the reveal that the property is equipped with a bulletproof gym and many other expensive facilities. Also linked to them is the Avenue Towers on Tiami Yusave Street, Victoria Island, Lagos, worth $55 million. In a country of over 170 million people, with many living in shanties, where day-to-day -day survival remains a painstaking task, a fraction of criminals party on the resources meant to develop infrastructures and improve the citizens' standard of living.
While the recoveries continued, many of the persons indicted in the scam of unbelievable proportions have been arrested and charged to court by the EFCC. In terms of conviction, the Commission, as at the end of April 2016, secured over 125 convictions. Additionally, it has obtained orders of court to temporarily seize or get forfeited proceeds of crime assets worth millions of dollars within the same period. In order to enhance the operations of the Commission, Magu has instituted a number of reforms. To enhance the Commission's reach, additional zonal offices were created in Ibadan, Oyo State, and Meduguri, Borno State. More units were also created, like the Forensic Account Fraud and Procurement Fraud Units. Other units within the organization also got a boost, like the Forensic Unit, where state-of-the-art equipment were procured to ensure that investigations are properly conducted and sufficient evidence is derived to support prosecution. Various incriminating documents recovered from criminals are also analyzed here by the best forensic experts in Nigeria. The polygraph section has also been supporting in the area of establishing evidences. The polygraph machine, which is the first in any law enforcement organization in Nigeria, has aided the filtering and ejection of bad eggs from the system. It is used for pre-employment purposes and also deployed for integrity tests of staff. Come in, please. Before? The polygraph officers were trained in the United States at the American International Institute of Polygraph. The preventive aspect of the fight against corruption has gotten a boost also with the engagement of the media, civil society organizations, donor agencies, international partners, sister law enforcement agencies, the judiciary, members of the bench, organized labor unions, schools, youth groups, women groups, the entertainment industry, faith groups, community leaders, and a host of others too numerous to mention, all brought together on the various partnership arrangements for increased public engagement and participation in the war against craft. In addition to a strong social media presence, the Commission also has various publications for disseminating information to the populace. These include the Zero Tolerance magazine, which is a quarterly publication. EFCC Alert, a monthly online magazine. Red Alert on Scam, an anti-corruption teaching and preaching manuals for both Muslims and Christians in the country. EFCC also runs weekly radio and television programs on Nigeria's largest electronic media networks. The Commission has applied for radio and television broadcast licenses to run Nigeria's first grassroots anti-corruption radio and television stations. Aisha, that was a lovely documentary. I would say well done to all of you that participated in that production. What caught my attention most was the fact that while some people stack millions of dollars in their bedroom, others have to pay the price. Look at those pictures showing shanties. You mean the people living in that condition? I can't believe that in Nigeria we actually have such people and, you know, such environment in Nigeria. It's disheartening. <laughs> I know. I feel Aisha. so pained. I know, I know. That was the same thing I felt, you know. We have those things. In fact, when we were shooting those images, I couldn't believe what I saw. I, I find the place, you know, people living in a condition where there's no amenities, nothing was provided, no toilets, no health facilities, no portable water. Even their homes were built with woods and zincs that are substandard. And, you know, m the most painful part is a few meters away from those locations, those shanties, you find high rises. Those people, you know, they are right at the middle of affluence, yet they live in poverty. It, it's painful. It's Very painful. painful this dear. is a wake-up call to all Nigerians. We have to come out and fight for our rights. Nigeria is a blessed country. We can no longer sit down and watch few unscrupulous and corrupt individuals steal our commonwealth for private gains. Oh yes, we have to say enough is enough. Nigeria must be saved from the grips of corruption and it involves you and I. Next on the program is a short report highlighting events at the just-concluded anti-corruption summit in London. Aisha Gambari attended the summit and filed in this report. Please stay tuned. 
The summit with the theme Tackling Corruption Together took place at the Commonwealth Secretariat in London. It was attended by major stakeholders in the fight against corruption within the Commonwealth countries and beyond. President Mohammed Buhari attended the summit in company of all the top government factionaries, including acting chairman of the EFCC, Ibrahim Mustafa Magu. In his keynote address, President Buhari noted, and I quote, Corruption is one of the greatest enemies of our time. It runs completely counter to our values as it rewards those who do not play by the rules and also creates a system of patronage where the resources are shared out by a small elite while the majority are trapped in poverty. When it comes to tackling corruption, the international community has unfortunately looked the other way for too long. We need to step up and tackle this evil. This charge sums up why we're all gathered together here today. End of quote. The president went on to state the anti-corruption stance of his government. Tackling corruption has been a defining feature of my public service. Upon assuming office on May 29th last year, I made fighting corruption as one of the three pillars of our administration's priority programs. Indeed, when I came to office, corruption had become endemic and systematic, threatening the very foundation of our national life, security and democracy. As a result, I have demonstrated zero tolerance for corrupt practices by combating corruption head-on. We are determined to bring integrity to governance through leadership by example. At the global level, Nigeria is committed to forging strategic partnership with willing countries to combat corruption. Unquote. The endemic and systematic nature of corruption in our country demanded our strong desire to fight it. We are demonstrating our commitment to this effort by bringing integrity to governance and showing leadership by example. The summit organized by Office of the British Prime Minister David Cameron attracted delegates including heads of government from over 60 member countries of the Commonwealth, various anti-graft agencies including the EFCC, civil society organizations involved in the fight against corruption, legal practitioners, human rights activists, members of the parliament, Transparency International, and the media, amongst others. It provided a networking platform for the delegates who shared ideas, experiences, and measures to ensure that corruption is completely eradicated. The summit also featured exhibitions by various organizations, including Routers and Transparency International, amongst others. Apart from his participation at the summit, the acting chairman of EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, met all the stakeholders to seek support for the war against corruption. He was at the Chatham House, London, to discuss issues about tackling the scourge and how the Chatham House can be part of the fight championed by the Commission in Nigeria. Magu was received by Elizabeth Donnelly, Assistant Head and Research Fellow, African Programme. Magu also met civil society activists at the Global Witness Office on Post Kent Street, London. Global Witness is a non-governmental organization that exposes the hidden links between demand for natural resources, corruption, armed conflicts and environmental destruction. He sought the help of the group in exposing hidden illicit wealth traced to corruption within Nigeria and beyond. The meeting was attended by Nicholas Hilliard, Antonio T. Carico, Simon Taylor and Dotson Oloko. That was a good move by the acting chairman EFCC Ibrahim Mustafa Magu. Involving the international community in tracing illicit wealth is a welcome development. It is a welcome development. Before you, because Aisha, if you agree with me, most of the money stolen in this country are taken out, out, of, the, the out of the shores of exactly. the country, exactly. out of the country to develop other, other countries' economy yeah. at the expense of, of ordinary Nigerians. Yeah. Sure. So I think it's high time we come together to say no. Enough, enough is enough. enough, is enough. Actually, yeah. And with this move, if the looters now know that there's no safe heaven to hide yeah. their proceeds, they will desist from such acts. Exactly. Next on the program is an important announcement. Please stay tuned. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, hereby apologizes to Gabriel Ogebe Daudu, whose picture was mistakenly used on this program on the 4th of May in place of Gabriel Daudu, a former Kogi State House of Assembly member who was convicted on money laundering charges by the Federal High Court Lokoja on the 25th of April 2016. 
mistake was inadvertent, as the commission has no reason to impugn the hard earned reputation of Gabriel Ogebe Daudu. The EFCC enjoins members of the public to take note. Thank you, Kamila Gaby, for that announcement. Like you rightly pointed out, we sincerely apologize for any inconveniency caused by that action. It was totally unintentional. And with that, we wrap it up on today's edition of The Eagle. Don't forget to send your feedback to us via The Eagle at EFCCNigeria.org or through our social media platforms at Official EFCC across all the social media networks. My name is Aisha Gambari. Thank you for watching and God bless Nigeria. And I am Aisha Mohammed. Please join us next week for another edition. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.